Honorable <laughs> Philip J. Pierre, Prime Minister of St. Lucia, His Excellency Peter Chen, Ambassador of Taiwan to St. Lucia, staff of the Embassy of Taiwan, officials of the International American Foundation joining us virtually, Project Officer of the Jeff, Ms. Catherine Seelis, President of Raise Your Voice, St. Lucia, Inc., Directors of Raise Your Voice, St. Lucia, Inc., Honored Guests and Grant Recipients, Ms. Raisa Joseph, Director of the Folk Research Center, Staff of the Office of the Prime Minister, good morning and welcome to this Grant Awards presentation by Raise Your Voice, St. Lucia, Inc. My name is Mondi Lewis, and I'm here in my official capacity as a director of Raise Your Voice, St. Lucia, Inc. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is a very honored time for us to be here. I know it's the Christmas festivities, but um, Raise Your Voice has done it again with its outreach to the community, to the most vulnerable amongst us, to our women especially, our women who drive our economies. And we are grateful for this grant today and also for the tireless work of the organization and its directors. Um, I would like you to give a round of applause for Ms. Catherine Silas and all the directors <laughs> at Raise Your Voice. Um, I know this agro-processing facility is one step, and today you get grants for, to micro farmers and the training, and I know that is going to be really um, an impactful way in terms of food security in St. Lucia, something that the Prime Minister has been championing, 25% reduction in our food import bill by the year 2025. So um, this occasion ties in very well with the mandate of the government of St. Lucia, um, I'm sorry, I cannot help myself but tie in the work <laughs> that Raise Your Voice does with what the government of St. Lucia does, um, given my, you know, my dual role. So you will excuse me if I make a reference um, to what this government is doing. And I know Raise Your Voice is a supporter of the work of the government of St. Lucia, because what we want is a better St. Lucia, a safer St. Lucia, a happier St. Lucia for all of us. With that, I would like to welcome Ms. Alberta Richelieu, another director of Raise Your Voice St. Lucia, for a presentation on behalf of the organization. Ms. Richelieu. Good, Good morning. Protocol having been established by our director, Ms. Mondi Lewis, um, I would begin with welcome, welcoming all our participants this morning. In the relentless pursuit of economic empowerment for marginalized and vulnerable women in St. Lucia, Raise Your Voice St. Lucia Inc. has emerged as a stalwart advocate for the rights and well-being of women and children facing the scourge of gender-based violence and systematic barriers in accessing justice. A transformative chapter in this journey unfolds thanks to the generous grant of the Inter-American Foundation, propelling the organization towards its goal of fostering sustainable livelihoods. Notably, this milestone is realized through the provision of small grants to 20 female micro-business owners strategically directed towards the vital sectors of agriculture and agro-processing pivotal players in the economic landscape of this island of St. Lucia. These micro-grants transcend mere financial contributions. They stand as Raise Your Voice St. Lucia Inc., guided by a vision of empowerment, orchestrates a combination of targeted training programs and financial support. The aim is clear and that is to fortify the capacities of these women entrepreneurs by endowing them with essential skills, knowledge, and resources. This initiative is not merely about overcoming economic hurdles, but rather it is about empowering women to become drivers of positive change in their communities. 
The strategic investment in agriculture and agro-processing aligns seamlessly with the overarching goal of creating sustainable and resilient businesses, effectively dismantling the cycle of vulnerability and fostering a more inclusive and equitable society. Today's grant ceremony is not merely a transaction of financial assistance, and we want to make that clear. It is a pivotal moment in the journey towards economic empowerment, but more importantly, sustainable development. For these 20 women, 20 participants who are seated here today, it signifies more than the tangible support they receive. It marks the initiation of a network of solidarity and empowerment. The ripple effect of these micro grants extend far beyond individual businesses, permeating the wider community and society. It reinforces the powerful notion that when women are economically empowered, the entire societies flourish. In the ongoing mission of us at Raise Your Voice, Inc., these initiatives serve as a beacons of hope transforming marginalized women from victims into empowered agents of change in their communities. As we, delve into, as we delve into the practicalities of our approach, the provision of targeted training and comprehensive toolkits takes center stage in our initiative. Empowering our grant recipients goes beyond financial assistance, as we said before. It encompasses equipping them with the knowledge and tools that are essential for their journey so that they're no longer dependent on us at Raise Your Voice or any other person in society. It provides them with all the tools necessary to equip them with micro-business success. And so our training addresses a common challenge faced by micro-business owners, which is the lack of robust financial records. By instilling the importance of meticulous documentation, we provide these entrepreneurs with the skills to create a solid foundation for their businesses. The ability to systematically record sales, expenses, and production not only fosters transparency and accountability, but positions these women as credible candidates for further funding opportunities and obtaining loans from financial institutions. In a landscape where documentation gaps often impede access to financial resources, our commitment to empowering these small and micro business owners with the tools to articulate their business narrative is a pivotal step towards fostering resilience, growth, and sustainability in their enterprises. As we celebrate this glorious chapter in the journey towards economic empowerment and sustainable development, let it be known that our commitment extends beyond this grant ceremony. It is a commitment to nurturing lasting change, one empowered woman at a time. Through empowerment, documentation, and community impact, we stand resolute at Raise Your Voice in our mission to be architects of positive transformation in the lives of marginalized women, fostering a legacy of resilience and prosperity in this small island of St. Lucia. I thank you. I, I don't want to single out Miss Celius because she told me she's just a, a, a bystander today. Um, but I think all the directors here um, and those who are abroad and at work, they know of the constant, <laughs> I call it contact, that Catherine has with all of us to get it done and to get it done for women like you, even for women like ourselves. Um, sometimes we get bogged down with our own lives, but um, Catherine makes sure she instills in us the need to give back to give of our time, our professions. You have two lawyers here. I'm sure they have cases in the high court right now, <laughs> but they are here um, to give our time, our resources to the work, to developing a better St. Lucia. And someone I know who works relentlessly every day, he says to me, Mondi, we are doing this for the people. And uh, if any day that I forget and think it's about me, he will surely humble me and remind me 
what we come to work every day to do. So with that, I would like to welcome Honorable Philip J. Pierre, Prime Minister of St. Lucia. Thank you very much, Mondi. Good morning. First of all, let me apologize for my lateness. We, we run small countries, but sometimes we get involved in things that are supposed to be for big countries. But since we are small countries, we have again this morning, in fact, I'm still involved in, in any keynote address after hearing what Ms. Richelieu said. Ms. Richelieu comes from the fine ancestry of, of, of a, legal, a legal luminary who happened to be at school with me, but he was brighter than me. <laughs> and uh, let me also welcome all the participants and Ms. 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 Dice of the Folk Research Center, uh, an advocate for everything women, <laughs> literally everything women. Let me recognize Isa. Um, I want to really congratulate you for being here and the staff of the Office of the Prime Minister, the Press Secretary, and the staff. Let me, first of all, congratulate, raise your voice for this initiative. Raise your voice has been an, an NGO that has blazed the trail. Blazed the trail in that always reserving the right to make their voice heard, to say what they believe at the time is right and important. Raise your voice has always has, has a, a conscience, a conscience that speaks for rights of people. And even if sometimes that these words seem to be in disagreement with the powers that be, I can, I can assure Raise Your Voice that, that my government accepts a country view. We accept an opposing view. We accept different and new ideas. We expect people to have uh, different ideas. And we never, add the, we never add a personal touch of personalities or vengeance or revenge for personal, for personal ideas or for ideas for, or for ideologies that do not seem to be what we think is right at the time. So I want to encourage you as a voice to continue to advocate, to continue to speak up for, for the rights of people, the rights of women. Continue to speak up. The government will accept it. We will try our best not to, to cross friends with you. <laughs> <laughs> so there is never, ever going to be any withdrawal of subventions or, or things of that nature. My government doesn't operate in that manner. We accept opposition. We accept people to have different ideas. But it's about you, the ladies, here this, this morning. Yesterday, I went to a honey, some people who were, who were getting involved in honey production. And, and I was struck by the number of women who were there. Actually, it was a regional workshop. And the number of women that, that, that were involved in agriculture and, and in the production of honey was encouraging. And this morning, to see 20 women involved in agriculture is even more encouraging. I think you deserve yourself a round of applause. <laughs> the, the, the business of food security is more important than many of us seem to think. Some time ago, I made a point about the use of bananas. And as usual, People who know better, but, but who always try to score very cheap points, tried to, to pretend as if I was speaking nonsense. And what was mo most hurtful about it is that a, a, a little child was used to go on television and say the Prime Minister wants her to eat banana oil and banana this and that. And it was sad for people who understand the problem with food security. The food security problem, more people are suffering from a lack of food now than before. Yes. So instead of we improving, as far as food security is concerned, we are getting worse. Yes. Add that to climate change. Add that to the droughts and the floods and the hurricanes. And you see the problem we are in as far as feeding people are concerned. So when a prime minister gets up 
and he, and he says to people, try to grow more bananas so that you can protect yourself and feed yourself and your families. And selfish politicians try to make a joke if it is really sad. Not sad for me, but sad for the people who try to make a joke of it. I spoke sometime about cassava. Cassava is a power food. Cassava is a power food. Cassava, sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes are six week crops. Cassava, that, 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 you can vote into several things. Again, for political reasons, it sounded as if I was being, I was being either foolish or deliberate. But in my business, I've learned that the, the, the truth always sets you free. I've learned that in this business. And seeing you this, this, this morning, um, and, and knowing that some organizations have decided that to work with Raise Your Voice, to be able to give you these grants of 500, 500 US dollars each to help you, is really, it's really heart rend it, 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 it really makes my heart feel, feel good. Because I see the message is going forward, and I see that you, as ladies, are taking the challenge. Women in agriculture, your history would show you that women were involved in, in agriculture from a time of from the dark days of slavery. Women were always involved in agriculture, and when when, when we moved from agriculture in terms of small crop agriculture to sugarcane and bananas, women were always involved, still involved. And now for you to be have to have your own businesses is encouraging. I want you, as your guest speaker says, to understand you have a business. Don't see yourself as probably somebody who just plants crops. You have a business. You have a business. And in a business, you must keep records. In a business, you must act like a business person. You must try to add value to the products that you are growing. And in the agro in the agro a processing lab that I know is being built now, I think you can, there can be, there can be a marriage between your crops and the lab. So you produce for the lab. But you, so that means you have to have records. And records are simple. You have to keep records. You have to understand that your business can grow into a massive business. Agriculture is changing. The, the days of large farms are, are over. Not, not over, but you can produce in small spaces. And that's what's important. If I can speak, if I can tell you to, if I can speak out of turn, this year in, in the budget, I'm going to have a special line for advancement in, for adding, adding technology to agriculture. We're going to have a special uh, budget line, particularly for women and young people. And I'm putting my friend the ambassador notice <laughs> that will need some extra budgetary funds. <laughs> I, I'm putting him <laughs> on notice because, you know, we have to balance the budget and then we need to do, do certain things. So next year, next budget, we're going to have a special line for advancement in agriculture because we have to feed ourselves. We must feed ourselves. So I want to wish you all the best. I want to apologize again for, for being late. And if I, if I run out, it's because I've... I've got to do some stuff which is a little more than the Infosan Russia. Thank you very much and thanks to Rita for this. Thank you very much, Honorable Prime Minister. And in his in another life, he would have been the one um, he's a management consultant and he really did audit businesses tell you about your bookkeeping and how to run your business. So who knows, maybe he'll facilitate a, a session for you one day um, because I don't, we cannot afford him. I'd raise your voice. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> we cannot afford him, but maybe he will, who knows? He, who knows, he might um, volunteer his time to us. But thank you again, Prime Minister, for uh, addressing us. I would now like to move on to the presentation of awards and invite Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre to help us with our first set of presentations. Good morning to all. I'm now start calling the list of the grant participants. 
Chantal Chalery. Adarik Asen, Asen. Um, Adarik Asen, Asen. Asen, sorry. Please excuse my pronunciation. <laughs> Laura, I'm sorry. Laura May Hippolyte. Aliyah Shalmine. We'll call an ambassador from this person. We'll call an ambassador to the next, the next slide. Oh, okay. So, from the number six on it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Nikita Alexander. Thank you, Honorable, um, Honorable Philip J. Pierre. Um, I would now like to call up Ambassador Peter Chen. Um, Cadell Tiffany Francis. Petra Blackman. Um, Janice James. <laughs> Patricia Sonny. Michaelina Nelson. Oh, Michelle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lenora Benjamin. Henrika Henry. Andrina Philip. Raquel Charles. <laughs> Colleen Johnny. <laughs> Melissa Shalmine. Paula Joseph Berthia. <laughs> Alberta John.
Grace Edward. Andrea Eileen, Eileen. <laughs> <laughs>